There is no casually liking Corvettes. The C6 is a car around which to revolve your life. Which Corvette is best Corvette? Mine was the best last year. My Corvette is best because glitter f My Corvette is best because double badge. No, mine is best because chrome fog light covers over no fog light. <laughs> Which Corvette is best Corvette? It's because my toy car has an open hood just like my real car has an open hood. Mine is best because fake vents. Because they were always fake. Because black tail light louvers. Freedom. Because my car is driving to my engine cover. Because American racing wheels. No low ballers, I know what I have. My two year old daughter loves Corvettes. My Corvette is best because revolving toy car. No, officer, I'm not doing anything wrong. Civilians are allowed to have amber lights facing forward because flame tail light covers. Because no tail lights. My Corvette is best Fox body. My Corvette is best because I have roll bars that do nothing. My Corvette is best because because I put my hood up to fix my hair and also look at my car. My Corvette is best because I illuminate the area under the hood with lighting that I found at a titty bar. What's better than sparkle flames? Freedom flames. The Corvette may not have invented the penis car, but it sure perfected it. And although this base model C6 shares a cobalt steering wheel, it's no longer the breakfast at Tiffany's top 40 upmarketed super soaker plastic bingo wheel headlighted Gran Turismo starring car for subway franchise owners that the C5 was. The fifth generation Chevrolet Corvette is the commemorative coin set of automotive investments. C5. For the boomer who buys Jurassic Park collective plates. He has a collection of unused Zippo lighters and a hoarding safe full of silver certificate dollar bills. He loves matinee movies at AMC theaters. All his sons are married and they all slow dance to Simple Man at their wedding receptions. Well, sometimes my wife doesn't want to drive in my Corvette to the car show, so she just takes her Honda or her Toyota. Or the Jeep, you know, she likes that. I know the guy who makes these. I heard that this is the car that the kids like, but it's not as nice as my Corvette because my Corvette has a V8 and I don't think this has a V8, so it's not as good as my Corvette. These are also, they're kind of like Corvettes, but I heard that they don't have V8s either, so there's no way something like this can be as fast as my C C5 Corvette. Oh, this is another, this is my friend Jimmy. He has the new Corvette and he really likes it. And someday I'm gonna collect all of them. And he got he got a special deal. The guy from the dealership, he came over and he gave him the little toy car. I'm gonna get a toy car for my Corvette too. Oh, this guy with this C5, he just ruined it. He ruined the C5. He made it faster than my Corvette. And that, that's just, I, I, I'll tell you what, he, he lost all his value. He lost, uh, how is he gonna get the money back out of his Corvette? He just, he just, he just cut the thing up and learn. Why do you want people looking at you when you could look at your Corvette? 1979 Corvette C3. It took four generations of cars for General Motors to clear up all the gambling debts, get alibis for all the missing call girls, pay off three district judges, and undo all the damage the C3 did to the good name Corvette. The C5 is a flavored condom on wheels, and the flavor is Denver Omelette. Mmm, yes, yeah, sophisticated motoring. Yes, I also like sophisticated motoring. I do too. Small engines, yes, small engines. Ah, uh, it's all about the handling and the sound. Yes, mm-hmm, yes, mm-hmm, yes. Me, me, big boy. Aw, himbo. Yeah, I never study. But I get an 85% on every test because thirsty assistant principal former guard girl wants to touch me. My name is Z06. I had to write my horsepower number on the side so I don't forget. Hey, I'm Z06. I look at Pornhub in class. And if it's study hall, I bust right in my Jordan shorts. I have like 10 of them I got for free because my jawline is sharper than Aaron Eckhart's. Corvette C6. 
the Mumford and Sons of cars. Once you're into vets, you're into them. You're getting a bow tie tattoo from Paradise Lost, and you're setting aside shopping spree money for Corvettes at Carlisle, promising yourself that you're gonna get there early and avoid the traffic. And you're not just gonna go over to Callaway's section with your dick jealous heart in a confusing way as you try to figure out where the money goes. Brazilian horse safari. My name's Harry. Hi, Harry. I'm gonna reward myself with a Corvette. Great. Most people do. Well, I'm gonna be unique and get a new one with all the bells and whistles. That's pretty easy, Harry. Uh, most dealerships have multiple C7s. Oh, well, uh, I'm gonna stand out and I'm gonna customize my Corvette. Yeah, Harry. You and everybody else at Carlisle. Uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna get a Callaway and be snazzy. Why do you want a Callaway? My name's Harry. That doesn't answer my question. I own three subways and a book at the Beppo. Still doesn't help. My name's Harry. Harry. I'm a stand out in a Corvette. Harry, I don't think you... Harry license plate. And while the vet's cargo area is wider than you'd expect, the back glass sweeps low over top, preventing you from carrying bulky items. The arrow wagon solves that problem. Congratulations, Callaway. You built a Veloster. But the C3 is a sunburned Atlantic City escort layering on foundation and mortgaging her reputation to continue a lifestyle enjoyed a decade ago. Oh yeah, I'm a Corvette Z06! I'm as big and dumb as a car can come! God, I'm so dumb! But my packs look like Steve Rogers' chest after he came out of his sip cocoon! I'm sure I'm forgetting something. What is it I'm forgetting? Oh yeah. Headlights go up. There we go. The C5 has the game genie of engines, the LS. If you have an LS, you win. You win. Yes, the Corvette always gets aluminum. It's always the fastest. Yes, the Corvette wins. The Corvette never loses. It's the best. It's the <laughs> And oh, oh, yeah, digital gauges. Real fart. <laughs> wait, wait, it doesn't work? What? They're not even real? This, this fancy gauge. It's just a color overlay. And it gets burnt out because the sun shines on it and melts all the colors together like a rainbow bukkake. So most of the C4s you're going to find on Craigslist will be automatics because when the C4 landed in 1984, automatic transmissions were still seen as a luxurious and prestigious option. So fancy. So fancy. So fancy. So fancy. Oh, it's so fancy. So fancy. Quite right. It's so fancy. So fancy. I drive an automatic Corvette and it's so fancy. Mm. I wouldn't bother changing my own gears. It's so 1970s. Automatic is in vogue right now, don't you know? So fancy. It's so fancy. I'll need a second monocle. Uh, Hartford, Connecticut. The Corvette C5 is the quintessential midlife crisis car. It somehow inspires the tackiest impulses of middle-aged Americans with aftermarket floor mats, donkey dick shifters, and Borla XR1 racing exhaust because we need to outrace Father Time somehow. The Corvette is the most defended car brand on the market. It has more white knights than girls who post to our picks. I think the only other brand we get ripped this hard over is BMW, and that's saying something. Because when you look at the aftermarket for these cars, C5s are just open mouths, gargling cheekfuls of louvered taillight covers and hydro dipped or whatever that thing is, center console trim pieces. The C5 is the equivalent of a Harley Davidson trike conversion. It's for the old guy who wants that old-timey feel but lacks the means or the physical capability to 
enjoy the real old car he wanted. Because all he really wants to do is mash the throttle wide open in fourth gear, feel the torque, and hear Joyce Meyer resonance from the four horsemen pipes. Corvettes also bring out the argumentative side in enthusiasts like few cars can do. With the exception of Callaway, most tuner guys hate Corvettes. And I've never heard a good reason outside, so much displacement it hardly makes any power. Eh. Random Access Memories was the first Daft Punk album I listened to. You criticize a Corvette and you get the two extremes of disagreement. Defenders either misspell everything in a passive-aggressive lowercase manifesto, or they just put on caps lock so everybody knows how hard they're punching the keys. Uh-oh, things are getting a little bit case sensitive. No low ballers, I know what I have. I'm just testing the water, just testing the water. Wife making me sell it. I will not reply to texts. Calls only. Don't ask me if it's still available. I will not answer if you say that. <laughs> hey, you wanna look at my Corvette? What do you wanna do that for? You wanna buy it? It doesn't matter how many Aston Martins this car beats. It can never be one. And that's the tragedy of Corvette. This car is faster than Aston Martins. This is faster than a Ferrari. Which Ferrari? I don't know. Pick one that's slower than this. This was in a Transformers movie. Yes, this car. In this exact color. Starred as crosshairs in Transformers The Age of Extinction this summer. Which technically means this is the first time I can say I've been inside an actor. <laughs> Although it won't be the last time, Burt Reynolds. 455 horsepower and goes from 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Which is enough to get you revved up and raring to try something stupid before realizing you're not Chris Harris or even Zach Clapman in a Miata. So you slam on the brakes, nut in your BVDs, and wonder how a complete non-ending on the scale of Tomb Raider 2 could get you so hard. You know what? The last time we did a Corvette, it was also raining. So how about this? Bam! Second C7. Bob, it's not just any old Corvette, I'll tell you what. This is rare. It's rare. This is a, it's a Z06. And I'll tell you right now, don't waste my time. I'm a busy man. I'm a busy man. I'm a busy man. I'm a busy man. <laughs> Nineteen eighty eight Corvette C four. The official car of watching Hannah Minx videos on mute. This is the car for the secret softy, the sensitive man who shouldn't be ashamed of it, because real men cry on the hoods of their Corvettes. His favorite part of sex is the pillow talk, and he lets his girlfriend play with his prostate a little. But the guys at the poker game don't have to know. Oh. Uh I'm Z06. I carry two trays during lunch. I'll have to pay for the second one because I'm a football. Aw, you're such a himbo. Yeah, I curl my books in between classes and Mr. Hepper smiles and says, There goes a real American. He told me I'll be governor someday. How you got cash in him? Well, I'll tell you right now. I'm firm on my price. I am firm on my price. That's right. One, two, three, four, five. The C7 is a car for the guy who finds a way to work his interest in carbon fiber into every conversation. This guy only knows about happiness anecdotally. He brews his own IPA and gives it as a condolence gift at funerals in lieu of flowers. The Corvette C7 Stingray is the official car of the guy you stopped hanging out with because you can't have a conversation anymore. You see, he just discovered the wire and he finished it all in a marathon weekend while sitting in a recliner caked in thick musk of Dorito dusk and ball sweat. He recommended it to you now, and by the third day, he's wanting to talk your ear off about the Barksdale investigation. And now 80% of every conversation is him asking if you started watching it yet and obnoxiously listening to the reasons why you shouldn't if you hadn't. And the reason he's doing this is because you could drive this car every day. It's the official car of two-fisted hand jobs, banging interns and executive washrooms. It just screams, I be off to money and I saw the Wolf of Wall Street 11 times. But some people slosh their bellies and argue that C06 is best Corvette because it's the most pure Corvette. 
the most true. It's the most true to the C2 427 best Corvette. No, my Corvette is my Z06 is best Z06 because it comes in supersonic but blue metallic. With the three liter that Z Ops and Z Op package, that's the top tier trim, best trim. And my Z06 is best Z06 because Z07 performance package, which give which best gives you the mag ride. Better cooling, carbon fiber brakes, and better best, better butter big wheels. The Corvette is every bit for the quarter life crowd, herding the bar hopping grazing of the free range himbo. The man whose favorite video game is J.O.I. videos. Walking around the sheets with his nose peeking out of his mask like a half-honest Pinocchio. A man who recedes from his own thoughts like a low tide. He's not afraid of the dark because of what might come out of it, but from what his brain might find lurking within. And lo, the cries of the beta ringing in the autumn air. As the himbo crests the horizon, their tears hurting a most exquisite anguish. And my Z06 is best Z06 because CFZ carbon fiber packages, which come back, uh, come back, I'm not done. Yes, it's a carbon, it gets you carbon fiber parts from the ZR1, which is the front splitter, side skirts, rear spoiler, and roof. So all of that pretty much, hold on. Pretty much gets my cor it makes my Corvette a carbon limited edition Corvette, but it's not carbon limited edition. But it's pretty much the same thing. I'll pay for lunch. I'll pay for lunch. I, j I just have to tell you that the only thing my Corvette doesn't have is a carbon fiber hood. But that's okay. That's okay. I don't mind. I mean, you could get them, but I don't really need it because my Corvette is best Corvette because I disabled the CAGS skip ship. And Borla exhaust because I need big boy barbels. Corvette C6 Z06. If I had a nickel for every time I heard a Corvette described as a midlife crisis car, I'd have more nickel than all the keys on a janitor's belt hook. I know a guy who I don't know. Uh, he got more than that for a Z06, and I can't prove it, but it's true. You're not listening to me. No one listens to me. I dress this way because Jay Leno dresses this way. I'm giving you a bargain. 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 Looks a lot like an RX-7 FD, doesn't it? Corvette C5. Mom, can we get an FD? No, oh, we have an FD at home. Cause this is your mom's voice too now. It's a sporty looking car for Americans who don't believe America has ever successfully produced a real sports car. There's nothing intrinsically wrong about buying some new expensive car once you reach a certain age. It's not necessarily wrong if you're using the new car to fill some type of void in your life. The problem is, is when you allow your car to become your whole identity because you don't have one. When you act like you're better than everybody else because of the thing. I bought a thing. Now my thing is my thing. And I'm pointing it out to everybody. Uh, I'm preempting any criticism that other people might have for me buying a Corvette. That's when it becomes a problem. I'm a Corvette guy now. I got a Corvette shirt on which is printed my C5 busting through a checkered flag. I go to Carlisle now every year. I sit in a folding chair with my legs wide, awaiting compliments to fill me up. As the C5 continues to age and as the owners pass on, these vehicles, these sports cars will metamorphize into something new. 
separate from its home owning, culture lecturing, and condescending original owners. Which also means that the hyper saluting, my country, right or wrong, bulk ammo buying, come and take it, perpetually upset, sweeping their dining room, living room, kitchen, waiting, imagining, fantasizing, fantasizing about intruders, pouring into their windows, fantasizing about force entry into their home, threatening their family. Oh, and the Corvette owner is ready in his imagination. There he is, dry firing again and again and again. Cocked, locked, and ready to rock, Doc. And finally, he is justified. Justified to use the tool in the way the manufacturer intended. Wave after wave of intruders, he eliminates. And then a 2000 era Pamela Anderson gives him a blumpkey. And then he walks out the front door, still hard, and the senator throws him a parade. Oh, look at you! A C5 Corvette C06! Aren't you special? Oh, you're getting pancakes, aren't you? With your son who left home at 12 and your daughter who took out loans to go to an uncredited art school? Does Hulkamania still live in your heart? Do you still think about Joey Buttafuoco getting railroaded? More like Joey Butta Wipo. Well, when you go to the bathroom, I'm just going to pound on the door and just say, Joey Butta Wipo, Joey Butta Wipo, Joey Butta Wipo. That was something I remember from school. And it's great because there's no comeback for that. I just washed it. No one can drive it. They didn't make a lot of these. It's still got the original air in the tires. See that scoop? They didn't make a lot of these. My wife is making me sell the car. You know, she put her foot down. Puts her foot down so often she's going to get... She's going to get cinder blocks for feet. Yeah! Who are you? I, I don't I don't really drive my Corvette anymore. I just sit in it. When you're a kid and you're playing near a road and your ball rolls into the street, how many scoldings and close calls did it take for you to learn that not every action demands an immediate response? Buying something youthful to prevent everybody from seeing you as old doesn't work because it's the Streisand effect. In trying to prevent something, all you do is draw attention to it. Which is why I don't think everybody buys Corvettes to distract themselves from aging. The, the answer is far simpler. These are fun. People want a this car that they can repair with stuff bought at a retail parts distributor. A C5 Corvette both embraces and refutes the existence of the midlife crisis Corvette narrative because it's true that New Balance wearing, newly single, alimony free dads love C5s. And I don't think it's a narrative that necessarily came out of nowhere because remember when this car was new? Came out in 96 for the 97 model year. And this thing continued into the 2000s because people who were in their 50s in the late 90s were born in the late 40s, the very beginning of the baby boomer generation. So the people who rode you know, prosperity upon prosperity and everything in the late 90s, their portfolio is worth more than it ever could. Wham! They all went out and bought the new Corvette. Some people bought two of them. You know, the good one that they kept under wraps and then the other one that they drove. Driving up the prices of these sensibly very simple sports cars. But now, those people are having trouble seeing at night. Those people are having trouble going upstairs. And here these cars are. Who wants them? And yet, for all the talk of a Corvette signifying a man who sets aside a stack each month just for tipping cam girls, there's something more elegant here, even if the first model, like this, lacks the refinement of later models. Because make no mistake, the Corvette is an American icon. We own this. A vehicle that Chevy wanted sports car enthusiasts to take seriously, and it's something they're still trying to do today. It has a two-speed automatic transmission. Two-speed in a sports car. All it does is rob the engine of whatever power it does have. It has mechanical drum brakes. 
So with mechanical drum brakes with no booster on them, you push your foot down on the brake pedal and nothing happens, so you push harder and nothing happens, and then you push harder and then they all lock up. You were right. It has a steering box that's sloppier than a bus full of moms on a Napa Valley wine tour. And there are no seat belts, head restraints, and the door sills come up to your oblique muscles. It can't go, it can't brake, it can't steer, and it can't keep its passengers inside. But just look at it. If you pull this car up to a bunch of big kahuna C5 owners who are all, my Corvette was, well, my Corvette is rare because my Corvette was only one of 500 made with a red color on the Tuesday of the rarest September of uh, Buy Cheeseburger Johnny with one of the, it was one of 1,000 made at, it, with the Ann Arbor stitching on the Corvette this year, 2003. And, and watch them shut up when you arrive because this is rare and theirs aren't and you exit the c1 with the confident indifference of an electric long border riding in traffic tie rods are about as long as a lightsaber's blade and the steering box is about as hard to find as an unaltered copy of the original trilogy it's like a child started making a car but ran out of the right kind of lego blocks so he just started using connects the C1 will come out on the perfect day, and you'll feel like Alexander the Great for a few hours, and then go home. And then you get back into your nothing special C3, and your beater then feels like it too is worth something. It isn't, but a rising tide lifts all boogie boards. What's that noise? What's that noise? What's that noise? Avoid the noise! Uh uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh. Uh. I had an accident. I think I had an accident. I'm storming the hill. It's bumper hill. General Motors built 2020's number one automotive hot take. The Corvette is no longer for boomers. See, I've heard the C8 described in person as, that's a rich man's car. And I love that phrase. I love it. It's so exterior, so transparent. That's a rich man's car. That means I want it, but I'm not willing to work for it. So I'll pretend the object of my desire is unworthy of my working class values. See also sour grapes. Look at this arm padding. Look where it tucks underneath the shifter switch cluster. No bunching, no creasing. I mean, if this was a BMW, a Mercedes, Acura, or Lexus, we wouldn't tolerate mistakes. But with GM, it's like, hey, what are you going to do? So when GM gets something really right, well, it's like me getting 100% on an algebra test. It's national news. Look at the back. The typeface spacing of the word Corvette is all new age Brookstone airport espresso bar. In a Corvette C7, well, you're just another Corvette owner. Do you want cheese on your burger now? Or just after I take it off the grill? But with a C8, it's people going, oh, so what do you do? HVAC happy trail, HVAC happy trail, HVAC happy trail. Run your thumb down my HVAC happy trail, HVAC happy trail, HVAC happy trail, HVAC happy Because nothing succeeds like excess, and America is the land of swappertunity. Because that's all anybody will do in an aero wagon. These cars will be bought on speculation and placed in bubbles in someone's tax-sheltered auto museum. Yeah, it's, it's, it's never open, is it? That's a shame, because the aero wagon is practical. You can road trip with this easy, with no inconveniences. The only drivability drawback to the aero wagon is this rear window. It's about the size of a desktop keyboard. You might as well be towing a horse trailer for all the rear visibility this back glass gives you. Corvettes at Carlisle is a pilgrimage for GM geeks that is only vaguely related to fiberglass-bodied V8 sports cars. 
The real theme of this weekend was family. Family is a word that re-elects the president. Family keeps a subpar sandwich shop open. Family props up a nameplate that would have otherwise died off during the 1970s energy crisis. Inside the bathroom barn, for lack of a better term, Corvettes are roped off and beyond reach like the strippers you can't take to the champagne room. Loretta Lynn blares from a portable stereo on the trash can by the urinal, as I wonder why a urinal has a portable stereo. An attendant sits by the door, smoking a cigar and sorting ones in front of a salad bowl full of tips. Although there's no indication of what we're supposed to be tipping him for. A man with the infant beginnings of a Fu Manchu stands by his sting ray. It's a first generation, so it's two words instead of one. But even if you didn't see the words sting and ray, you'd know just from the first gen standing next to it. He has a denim jacket and a perpetually furrowed brow, with creases and lines in his skin that brought Fampton comes alive on day one. He has a tattoo of what might be a cross or the first letter of a hated girlfriend. Doesn't matter, it's faded now. He has a friend with him who's younger. He looks like a reformed prisoner turned cool preacher. The kind who asks wayward souls where they're at with Christ. A man in a Yankees cap knocked on the C7 frame with his knuckles. Yep. That's strong, he said aloud to himself. Not two minutes later, two sailboat enthusiasts did the exact same thing. Men, we're, we're tactile creatures. We, we see with our hands. Ever wonder why let me see it really means let me hold it? I'm the same way. Do not touch signs are such a crock. The rain picked up. New Balance sneakers trampled grass to mud under every tent as more attendees sought shelter. Salt and pepper husbands pointed out features to okaying wives. Some other man with a press pass shoved four fingers down a C7 air vent. But the engine revs didn't stop. They escalated like a two-hour edging session. A squat man with a Dell's Gap t-shirt pointed at a rack of novelty signs for sale. And I got one here that says Bitch's Garage. I was checking my watch. Corvettes at Carlisle has a main event, the subtle purpose of which is to break your precious build. It's a two-mile parade route performed with a long wait time at idle, and then a slow crawl through town. Let's see if your high lift and long duration cams and fruit splash gusher carb jets can handle this kind of premeditated abuse. Not everybody treats their cars like they deserve to be treated. Some people beat on their cars, or neglect their cars, or curse their cars out. And sometimes it's not the car's fault. Sometimes it's the owner bringing his own issues to the car, hissing and moaning about his own lousy choices, and failing to recognize that he's actually sitting on the one good choice he made. It's rare to find a neglectful Corvette owner. Because they understand that a car isn't just a car. It can be part of your family. It can be part of your life. It can be part of your identity. The DNA of what makes you, you, at a level that extends past biology. It can be something more than the sum of its parts, just as the owner can be more than just a guy with an upholstery business. A Corvette can bring out the you that you always believed you were supposed to be. Whether that's true or not is immaterial, but you believe it. And in the uncertainty of life, that can make all the difference. And I saw smiling faces forcing imaginary sunshine against the white misting sky. Men warmly greeted each other and reassured one another that the fans will work and don't worry, I brought along lots of bottled water in case you have to pull over. These people had, have, a community tighter than any subreddit could hope to weave. They've been coming to Carlisle since I was paying for elementary food with lunch tickets. They have friendships, bound through wrenching rescues and emergency tows and fiberglass repair and maddening C4 spark plug changing procedures. I have none of this. I am a cynical poser with a clipboard and sour grapes. I see people who have solid foundations on which to build their place in this world, Corvettes or not. They have lasting families and hold hands as they walk. Their children are respectful and their dogs only pee in the long grass. There are no drunken police encounters or even that much profanity. If there was an overreaching feel to that Saturday, it was this. I want in. I want into this world. Not to command an LS engine, no, but to join these Corvette owners in their beanbag sense of belonging to each other.